The product that you're going to see me working with in this video, the 533 Tiny Trainer, was sent to me by FPV Crate. I did not purchase it. Uh, no one else has had any editorial input into this video, uh, and I have not received any money or other compensation other than the quad itself, which is kind of pointless to say that disclaimer because this isn't really a review and I'm actually showing you a problem that I had with this stupid beta FPV all-in-one toothpick flight controller which is great right up until it dies which is what happened spoiler but in the interest of uh, full disclosure there it is this is the 533 Tiny Trainer. It is a little three inch racing drone modeled after the DRL Racer 4 the big seven inch quadcopter used uh, for drone racing league. Uh, Evan Turner uh, and Armando Gallego, uh, they are the founders of 533, and they came up with this as a way for Evan to practice for DRL races, uh, like in his backyard, without taking out his big, loud, noisy uh, DRL racer. And it is, I freaking love this thing. I freaking love it. In fact, I'm practicing for a race right now, and my 5-inch quad blew the ESC, and I was like, fine, I'll just use this one, and I'm even faster on this stupid thing than I am on a 5-inch. That re reflects more on me as a pilot than anything else. But here's why we're here today. Freaking camera broke. Roll the tape. So I was flying, and I crashed, and after I crashed, the video looked fine, but then when I picked the quadcopter up, I had no video. And... I've, now I'm going to open it up and troubleshoot it, and I just thought I would take you along for the ride as we troubleshoot this real-world issue. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Unless you've troubleshot a camera before, in which case maybe you won't. Well, come along with me anyway. So the key thing when troubleshooting a camera problem is the question, do you have static, do you have black screen, uh, or do you have black screen? Yeah, those are the key questions. If you have static, it means your video transmitter has stopped working. Your video transmitter could have lost power. Your video, your whole quad could have lost power. So you have to think about how the video transmitter gets power and uh, then what could be going wrong. Or if you have static, it could also mean you're on the wrong channel. But if you were flying and then suddenly your, your video cut out and went to static, you know you're on the right channel. Um, the other thing that can happen is you can go to black screen. And if you go to black screen, then that means that the camera feed is not getting to the VTX, but the VTX is powered up and working, and you're on the right channel. And that is the situation that we're in now. We have black screen. There's another distinct distinction you can make there, which is if you do or don't see OSD. If you have black screen with OSD, then you know for sure that the flight controller is talking to the video transmitter, because the flight controller generates the OSD. But if you have black screen with no OSD, Sometimes the flight controller will still be okay. Sometimes if there's not a valid camera feed, the flight controller won't draw OSD. So if you do see OSD, then you know something. But if you don't see OSD, that doesn't actually tell you very much. In addition to taking the top off, I'm gonna go ahead and take the props off. I need to change these props anyway. That's always a good idea to do when you're working on a quadcopter on the bench. Incidentally, if you wanna build one of these, I've got a full build tutorial, link in the video description. They're super, they're really super fun. How could a quadcopter be better by being made heavier and made to fly sort of worse? It's kind of like asking how could a drift car be more fun than like an, a, an F1 car? Drifting isn't the fastest way to go around a turn. Yeah, but it's more awesome. I'm gonna just plug in here. Chances are it'll just freaking work. No, thank goodness. I mean, thank goodness it's just not working. We got black screen. Okay. Um, what's next? Let's just check the plug. The camera plug. No difference. What is this? That's for the... Let's try the joystick and see if the menu pops up. Okay, menu's not popping up. So if I had used the joystick and the camera menu had popped up, that would tell us that the video signal from the camera was getting through, but that the actual camera sensor was not working in some way. So I'm kind of glad that the menu didn't pop up because there's still a chance that my camera is not fried. So we're going to get our multimeter out. We're going to put it into DC volts. And we're going to measure the voltage going to the camera. It's going to be a little tricky to do this without uh, crossing the leads or something. Oh, there we go. So we're putting five volts out to the camera. Damn. 
So I guess that's good. I mean, I said, damn. Um, if we did not have five volts going to the camera, then that would mean that the flight controller regulator was fried and that we would have to replace the flight controller. So we do have five volts going out to the camera. That does not leave a lot of options for what could be wrong here. That's, we're, we're working ourselves around to a dead camera. Wires all look intact. All right, uh, the ultimate test would be to supply another camera. So here's a different camera, it'll just plug right in. It will also run off five volts. And if this works, then we have a dead camera. A hole. We don't have a dead camera. Same thing. I don't know if I'm happy or sad. So we swapped the camera. No difference. Camera can't be the problem. So what does that leave? No OSD. Solder joints on the VTX look fine. Is the flight controller the problem? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna desolder the video wires from the flight controller for both the camera and the VTX. And I'm going to solder them together. So if the flight controller had a problem, then it could be screwing up the video by soldering the camera and VTX video wires directly together. We'll cut the flight controller out of the equation and see if that's the problem. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. The flight controller is the problem. That's very sad. That's the part I least wanted to be broken, but at least now we know. Just out of pure desperation, I'm gonna solder the wires back and see if like magically it starts working again. Frick. <sighs> All right, well, there you go. It's a dead flight controller. Now you know how I troubleshoot this sort of thing. The answer is to replace the flight controller. Uh, you know, in a pinch, in a pinch I could uh, fly with, uh, I could I could just solder the two video wires together and bypass the flight controller, but the problem is I wouldn't have battery voltage monitoring, especially because I'm using Immersion RC Ghost here, and I'd, uh, I'm not running the custom version of Betaflight that supports Ghost telemetry, so I'm just kind of screwed. Flash the nightly build of Betaflight 4.3 to this, then use telemetry to monitor your battery voltage, and then you won't. Anyway, uh, that's it. Happy freaking flying. Sad face. You guys, I don't know where I am, and I, I don't know what's gonna happen, but if I don't make it out of this, I just wanna know that you subscribe to my channel, or, or maybe join my Patreon, or, or click, one of, click one of these videos I picked out for you. <laughs>